Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So today, globally, we consume more than $500 billion worth of plastic a year, right? You can just look around um, here or at your home, uh, right? There are plastic products all around us. In the United States, we consume more plastic per capita than anyone, and we recycle less than 10% of this material each year. The unfortunate side is we, this number hasn't improved over the past decade in spite of all of our best efforts, right? We need new ideas, real innovation in the plastic and plastic recycling space to bring plastics into the circular economy. At Birch, we think about plastic recycling very differently. We engineer enzymes that act as molecular scissors that effectively chop up plastic into the building blocks that were used to manufacture that plastic in the first place. Birch is led by myself, Emily, and Lewis. I have more than 10 years of experience working uh, in synthetic biology at leading biotechnology companies. Emily is an expert biochemist and operations leader, and Lewis is an expert uh, data scientist and computational biologist, and we three are leading Birch day to day. The problem that we're really trying to solve for is mechanical recycling. Today, 98% of plastics are recycled using heat. So plastic is sorted and then melted. That molten plastic is then extruded into pellets, these recycled pl plastic pellets that are used to manufacture the next generation product. The problem is that heat damages plastic. It reduces the quality, um, the color, the melting properties, the clarity of that plastic. It's an inferior product. Importantly, mechanical recycling uses a lot of heat, a lot of energy input. Uh, this produces a lot of CO2 and other greenhouse gas emissions. And finally, uh, more often than not, when a beverage container is recycled, it actually gets turned into a textile that never gets recycled. This is a linear recycling system, not a circular system. We've spent a lot of time thinking about how do we reinvent plastic recycling? And we're really excited about enzymes because we think they can truly address the efficiency, economics, and circularity of plastic recycling. So we're focused on PET plastics to start. Um, and the way enzymes work is, is sort of as I described to break down the, these materials into their uh, building blocks, but they do so at low temperature. Um, that's really important that the, the, uh, the amount of utility inputs into the process are significantly reduced. Uh, we anticipate that we'll reduce CO2 and greenhouse gas emissions associated with plastic recycling by 70%. And importantly, because we do this work at low temperature, we're not damaging the material. So it enables infinite plastic recycling, where we can go from beverage container to beverage container to beverage container again and again. So how do we do this? Conceptually, it's quite simple. We go to plastic contaminated environments and uh, scrape microbes that are, gr are growing um, on these plastics in the environment. We bring them into the lab and isolate the enzymes that are producing the circular molecules that we're interested in. We then engineer these enzymes to perform under industrially scalable plastic recycling conditions. We've thought a lot about our process end to end, and it's important to note that we don't need to reinvent the entire plastic recycling process. Um, the petrochemical industry has current art on how to uh, recover and purify the petrochemicals that we're working with. So the technical risk in our work is really in the enzymes and answering this question, are our enzymes able to digest most plastics most of the time? So Birch is about two years old. Uh, we really got our start uh, uh, in early 2022 uh, with SBIR grant funding. Uh, very quickly thereafter, we participated in the Y Combinator Business Accelerator and raised a small seed round um, after that. Uh, to date, we're really trying to move from science project to business. And the way that we do that is to demonstrate that our technology works at a pilot plant scale. So we're actively designing a pilot plant where we can take commercial bales of plastic, um, grind that material up, and demonstrate sort of the yield and sort of techno-economics of our process. Um, the plan is then by mid-2024 um, to take that data package, go out and raise a Series A, and build our first commercially scalable uh, plastic recycling plant. Our business model is to be vertically integrated. We intend to build small footprint, low emission recycling facilities near major metropolitan areas where, we'll re where, we'll, where we will source PET plastics, break that material down, and then partner with major PET manufacturers and plastic packaging companies um, to take our 100% virgin quality PET material. 
Uh, it's important to note that we have more than $80 million in LOIs to date from major plastic packaging and manufacturing companies that just demonstrates the unmet need for high quality circular plastic materials. So plastic recycling is an old business, right? It's been around for decades. There's been a lot of capex that's been spent on mechanical recycling and the supply relationships to feed those plants. Uh, the industry has not been sitting still. They've been trying to reinvent plastic recycling. Uh, uh, chemical recycling ha has sort of come around in the last 10 years, but uh, there's a lot of debate about chemical recycling. And I would argue that chemical recycling doesn't address the sustainability and circularity of plastics and doesn't really solve the problem. It creates a real opportunity for companies like Birch that can really function in this sort of transformational space to truly reinvent plastic recycling and bring plastics into the circular economy. So to date, we've raised about $4.7 million in government grants and VC funding. Gives us about 32 months of runway um, at our current burn. Uh, we're actively raising uh, a half a million dollars to support uh, build out of our pilot plant. Uh, this is really sort of an important demonstration for us uh, to be able to demonstrate to ourselves, uh, to our investors, and to sort of all of you that are um, that the economics, that the sustainability, that that sort of the metrics pencil out for this new process. So finally, I've, I've talked about PET plastics today, but I just want to point out that this is the tip of the iceberg. There's no reason that we can't design enzymes for additional classes of plastic um, to sort of uh, follow on from our PET work. So. I'm a real believer that enzymes will drive the circularity and sustainability of plastics moving forward. Thank you very much for your attention.